I'm going to do a little car engine detailing today on this Bentley GTC. It's an 09. It roughly has just under 50,000 miles on it. Now because this is a relatively big engine, I'm going to use my pressurized sprayer. And also if you see my other videos, we've got to remember the top of the hood. We get so fixated on looking down here that sometimes we forget to look above us and see the dirt that is up here. And also, the degreaser I use is not caustic, will not damage materials. But with that said, as I do keep a microfiber, so that let's say I get some overspray in the car, I can just wipe it. Um, and really, I've used this product so many times, I know it's just not an issue, but I still like to always apply caution. So I will do that, and I also, as I said before, make sure you do the engine first because you will get some oversp overspray and saline and make a mess around the perimeter of the car. So you want to get this dirty work done first. So I am dousing the hood up underneath the hood, so that will come clean. And then I simply saturate the engine pretty extensively uh, with my degreaser. As I said, uh, I use the Meguiar's Super Degreaser. It's a great product. It's safe. It's not caustic, but it is effective, and it does not leave a white residue like some of the other caustic degreasers out on the market. And because I can use it for so many uses and it comes with a concentrate, I'm a big fan of it because I can blend it, custom blend it to suit my needs. Now when I'm doing engines, I dilute it four to one, which means one part concentrate to four parts water. So this is pretty, and it's just a simple pressure alone from this uh, spray nozzle is shooting most of this dirt off because the degreaser is effective as well as the dirt's really just not a bunch of thick, greasy, oily dirt. Now if there were some problem areas, you can take this brush. This is a common, what's considered a wheel brush. And you can get some of these areas, the shrouding, whatever. This will only um, increase the effectiveness of your degreaser. And it will be a case-by-case -case judgment call on your part based on how dirty your engine is. If it's black, um, it hides the dirt better. If it's white, then these areas around what would be considered the trunk, or I'm sorry, the engine jam, you would probably still need to use a brush. Now we're simply going to hose it off. Start with the top. Start with the top so all the dirt can run down onto the engine that's already dirty down here. So if we rinse this first, and then we went to the top, now your clean engine is gonna become dirty once again. So start with the top. And I prefer one of these adjustable uh, trigger spray adjusters. That way, I, if I have some sensitive areas, I can just use a little tiny pressure and it's all controlled right here at the uh, nozzle. But for the most part, I'm gonna use full pressure uh, because it's relatively safe. This one's in, there's not too many areas that I have to be overly concerned with. My hood is starting to sag. Now, as I said, here's the air intakes here, so I'm going to keep it um, to a minimum as far as the water goes. I'm barely putting any water or allowing any water to come out. Just enough to rinse away the degreaser without shooting a bunch of water up into the air intake. And I'm going to go ahead and rinse off the fenders. Additionally, with overspray, I'm going to get the uh, radiator grill and shoot the bugs and debris out of that. And for the most part, that's it. Now we have a clean engine. There is standing water, but what I'm going to do first is just lower the hood without shutting it all the way. One of the cool little things on this Bentley is this emblem actually pops out and that's how you do the hood release once you've already done the release from the inside of the car. So on small engines you can just use the sprayer. Like I said this is Meguiar's Super Degreaser um, but this was a decent amount of area and I carry the, pre the, the pressurized pump with me. Um, it's just much easier on the hand. At this point you can see we've got all the residue as far as water on the uh, surrounding areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off first um, because I don't want it to water spot on me. 
I'm going to use the blower, the leaf blower. I'm going to blow out all the excess standing water. Uh, that'll take about two minutes. And um, then I'm going to start the engine up and we're going to go from there. Finish blowing off the engine. Once again, case by case, there's going to, every engine's going to hold and the water's going to pool up differently. So just pay close attention to those areas. Make sure you get all, you blow away all the standing water. You pay attention to the, all the electrical connectors, uh, the, what you would call sensitive areas of the engine. So I've blown it off. Now I can close the hood, start it up, allow it to uh, reach normal operating temperatures. Okay, a couple things. Uh, the most obvious one is this pole. This is my pole, my scrub pad that I use to wash RVs with. Now, in the first part of the video, you'll notice that the hood can want to stop. The uh, uh, shock cartridges have become worn out, so this hood does not want to stay up. Anyhow, so that's propped up. Uh, I've blown the engine off. I've allowed it to uh, run. It's been running while I've been doing other tasks on the car itself. But now at this point, you can either just call it quits. And this engine is clean and it's at a level 8 right now. That's what I would rate this engine right now as far as overall appearance and aesthetics. After you have allowed it to run and completely dry out, there's still going to be some remaining areas, especially if you do up here, and especially if there's some felt, because it will continue to drip. So what I do is I just take my clean, damp microfiber cloth, and I simply go around and I wipe down all the water-spotted areas and that's going to raise it from a level 8 to a level 9. There might be some spots on the shrouding. So I just go around and I touch it up. Uh, from the, the jam itself, there'll be water spots. So I just go around quickly and touch it up. Okay, at this point, you, I've now wiped it down and now I would put it at a level t uh, 9 because you don't have any residual water spots. The engine is perfectly clean and it looks great. But how do we go from a level nine to a level 10? Well, that's where this spray shine from Stoner comes in. Enhancing the black trim pieces. And this aerosol is ideal for that because it's very light. It's not thick, it's not oily and greasy. And I just quickly go all over the black pieces, the shrouding, including the front end here. Any black pieces I'm gonna get, including the jams itself. All in here, up in here. Um, it's actually looking pretty good. You can see it, the dressing's kind of pooled up here. So just a simple wiping across will get it to uh, you know, dissipate and blend in with the surrounding area. Looks awesome. Down in here, very, very clean. So engines are pretty straightforward. And if, you're de and if you are a professional detailer or pseudo-professional detailer, wannabe detailer, and you hesitate on whether to do engines, just know that it's really pretty easy work. You can charge an extra 25 to 150 bucks depending upon the engine. Uh, black is the good news. That's one of the few times that black is the good news because you're not going to spend a lot of time up on here because uh, if this was white it would require quite a bit more time but I can literally do an engine in under 15 minutes in most cases and this is also another reason why I like maintenance uh, maintenance is always better than a cure because if you allow it to build up with excessive dirt it's gonna take longer um, and so I always try to work it in with my maintenance detailing plans um, and it's just pretty easy money as far as the traditional 
detail processes go. So there we have, now we have a Bentley engine that is a level 10 and when anyone pops this hood, it's going to pop. It's going to really create the wow.